Hi, I'm Claire and I'm here today with my friend Alistair Ball who is a writer and a podcaster and also someone who cares a lot and tweets a lot about politics. Yeah, so I'm a writer, I write about politics, fiction, sometimes non-fiction. I write a blog where I kind of do, do regular updates about contemporary politics. I broadly identify as someone on the left or the far left. <laughs> yeah, fair. That's, that's the same for me. So today we thought we'd bring you a video of political books. So that's going to be some non-fiction political stuff for you and yep. some fiction with political themes for me. So let's get started with the books because we have got a lot of things to talk about. Do you want to go first? The first book I brought is Who Cooked Adam Smith's Dinner by Catherine Marcel. It's a really good book on uh, politics, economics and gender. Adam Smith, pioneer of classical yeah. economics, great economics writer, very very influential he came up with this idea that everyone acts um, sort of in their own interest and selfishly. The one thing he didn't obviously take into account in his theories is yeah. all of his food was prepared and served to him by his mother. Smith's I theories and Smith's ideas didn't take account into all this like unpaid work that goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much entirely done by women. There's a whole chapter on Florence Nightingale Ooh. and how she's been recast as this sort of saintly woman who did things out yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, out of love, where actually she was a real campaigner for nursing to be paid and paid yeah. a, a good wage. There's lots of stuff about that in there. Cool. It's a really good critique of a lot of the current economic thinking and the ideas behind it. My first book that I wanted to bring up is The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. I don't know if you can see, but it's basically like a giant slab of meat on the cover. It's because it's a novel about immigrants working in a meat packing plant in Chicago at the turn of the century, I believe. Yeah, it was published in 1906. It is not for the faint of heart. It describes working conditions and the conditions in which meat is made in such a way that it led to a change in the legislation of how generally food production was handled in the US because, um, yeah, it's a bit gross. Sounds but it's a really, really fascinating novel. It's just not a point of view that you get very often about like a Lithuanian immigrant in the US at the turn of the century. Sounds very relevant for a lot of the discussions that are going on now, now that like obviously immigration is discussed mm. a lot in the media and you know immigrants are typically doing the low paid yeah, poor absolutely. conditions like sort of unstable and um insecure work which is i guess what this goes into yeah so it absolutely. does sound relevant my second book is post-capitalism a guide to our future by paul mason this book is similar to the previous book is like a critique of the ideas yeah. that underline modern capitalism but there's a lot of really good books on that theme what makes this one different and interesting is this says what might happen next Ooh. yeah so he draws on a lot of economic theories he draws on marx he, he talks about adam smith he talks about other less well-known um especially like russian economists mm. and kind of builds this picture of how capitalism evolved and the cycles that, yeah. these long cycles that it goes through and why the system is sort of breaking down now mm. and what is likely to emerge out of it and what we can do to accelerate the process. Oh, interesting. That might be really interesting to people who are into sci-fi and fantasy, like we both are, mm. because it lets you kind of maybe look at different ways that you can imagine the future. Yeah, especially the near mm. future. It's quite dense, mm -hmm. it's got quite a lot of theory in it, but uh, it is interesting and it does explain everything cool. um, well. So yeah, I highly recommend it. Next up, I have actually got a play, The Resistible Rise of Arturo Ui, which is a play by Bertolt Brecht. And it's basically a play that is about the rise of Hitler and Nazism in Europe, but it's a recast through looking at the rise of this uh, gangster called Arturo Hui in Chicago. And Bertolt Brecht wrote that when he was in exile from Germany in uh, the 40s. Basically, it looks at what Ui does to um, get to the top rungs of power and it kind of parodies some of the things that we know Hitler did like hiring a dialect coach to sound different when he talked that kind of thing. The first time that I read this I was at university and at the time reading it it sounded so prescient for the way in which politicians go about you know um, trying to get more influence and I have a feeling that uh, if you reread it now it would be even worse. 
Yeah, I can imagine that's another one very, even though written a while ago, very relevant yeah, 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 for the discussions yeah. going on right now. <laughs> Absolutely. My third book is Unspeakable Things by Laurie Penny. This book is all about feminism. It's sort of both a broad book about feminism and yeah. an in-depth book about feminism, which sounds contradictory because it does cover a huge broad range of topics like mm. cyber sexism on the internet, it covers mental health, it covers sex work, it talks a lot about intersectionality, but it goes into all of them in a lot of detail. It's just a really, really good all-round book on kind of the state of, I guess, feminist discourse right now. My next book is a French classic and it is Germinal by Emile Zola. It is set in a mining town towards the end of the 18th century and it's all about the lives of the uh, miners who live there. The main character is someone who comes from out of town to work in the mine and kind of you get to discover what's going on in that town from his point of view. The main plot element, I guess, is that they're trying to get the bosses to make the mine more secure by putting up timber. The main character kind of organizes the people of the town and goes on a strike. It's difficult, but it is, you know, a really well-researched view of a specific time in history and it is just one of the great classics of the French canon. Number four is Private Island by James Meek. This is a book about privatization. Interestingly it kind of evaluates privatization on its own terms, so what goals did the government set out ah, to achieve by privatizing utilities? None of their goals were achieved. <laughs> It all went badly wrong. So you mean when a certain government will go on about how privatizing will make everything more efficient? And, and cheaper and yeah. this is about, it looks at in the details of various cases and how it costs more and delivers a poorer service. It's done in a series of five large case studies. It starts with the post office, then there's trains, water, electricity, um, and medicine, I think, is the other one. Oh, and housing. It's a very interesting, very sort of an objective book based on a lot of first-hand research, so it's, nice. it's really interesting. Nice. Next up, I have another historical book, and this is The Weeping Wood by Vicky Baum. This is actually a collection of short stories that go from really, really, really short to kind of like a little bit of a longer character study. All of the stories in this look at the discovery and then first uses and then kind of larger scale uses of rubber. So all of the stories interlink because they look at the same kind of subject matter. It looks at the first kind of uses and the science that people do to figure out what they can do more of or less of with it and kind of its uses and wars and stuff like that. It's just kind of a really really interesting look at something that you know, we don't really think about it, but really revolutionized so many things because rubber is being used in just so, so much. The way things are produced today and they're like, so much stuff is made overseas in poorer countries. We are so disconnected to mm. where our products come from and we don't know the conditions that these people work under who yeah. produce the goods and services, the goods mainly that we take for granted, you know. Yeah, and we also don't really know what these things are and how they're made, like yeah. how they come about. My final book I don't have a copy of because I listened to the audiobook, but it's A Homage to Catalonia by George Orwell. Orwell's a really interesting writer, lots of people will know his fiction Animal Farm uh, 1984, yeah. which is specifically anti-Stalinist, and yeah. a lot of people I think confuse Orwell as like anti-communist or anti-the left in general. My favourite of his non-fiction is Homage to Catalonia, where he travels to Catalonia in mm. Spain during the 1930s. It was published in 1938, and enlists in a militia to fight on the side of the left Republican forces against Franco and the fascists. Mm. supported by Nazi Germany and others. He enlists in a militia organised by a political party called the POUM, who are like a Trotskyist revolutionary workers' party. Mm. Um, they're anarcho-syndicalists. And it's really interesting, it's his kind of first-hand account of the war and how it goes, but specifically mm. the fighting within the left and how the um, Moscow-aligned Stalinists liquidate the other parts of the left and the oh, effect that has on the, yeah. on the war. It's a really interesting portrait of the complexities of the politics of the far left in the 1930s. And my final book is also one that I don't have a physical copy of because I listened to it on audiobook and that is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead and this is a kind of not really historical novel because it looks at what would have happened if the Underground Railroad, which was the name given to a network of uh, people trying to uh, smuggle slaves out of southern states in the US, 
was really a railroad that was really under the ground. So we follow a woman during her journey to escape from the slave plantation where she was born and where she was held and was made to work for most of her life and she you know, gets away and uses the Underground Railroad to try and get to freedom. But a large portion of the novel is dedicated to the fact that she can't actually be really safe anywhere because she's always worried that someone is going to find out what her past was and that she's going to be sent back. Really reading the book it felt like a historical novel, it really just felt like a true account of someone's life, it felt very very believable and basically the only thing that was changed is that her escape was helped by the railroad under the ground as opposed to just by people smuggling slaves out of slave holding states, that's really the only difference. One of the things I really loved about this book is the prose in it is absolutely beautiful, it's won a lot of awards and it's, you know, it's a very kind of brutal book because it talks about something that's brutal in its nature mm. and it doesn't pull its punches in any way. There are some good films I think that touch on those like 12 Years a Slave or The Birth of a Nation which again yeah. telling slave stories from slaves point of view. Something that you know we must not allow to fade from memory. Absolutely. So, yeah. So that's it, these were our book recommendations for books about politics, non-fiction, fiction. We of course would have a lot more to recommend, so hit us up on Twitter if you have any questions. I'll put links to Alistair's Twitter and blog and that in the description box below, and if you are more interested in kind of geek culture in general, I also put a link to Alistair's podcast, Moderate Fancy Violence. Yeah, and if you do read any of these books and you like them, or have any thoughts at all, yeah, do drop me a message. I really would be interested to see what people think. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check our recent video right about here. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button on my face right here for more videos every week. I've been Claire. I've been Alistair. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and see you soon. Thanks, bye.